How are we going everyone? Just got into some pruning here on the hedge, cleaning out all the dieback or the canker. Let's hope it's not canker because it really takes a strong hold of your conifers and it's quite destructive and quite um, invasive and it can spread quite quickly. Look at the holes we punched into the sides there. Now, if you've got a conifer hedge, please clean it out and if you see any dieback like that, make sure you get into it, clean it all out as best you can. Spray your tools, always keep your tools nice and clean. Spray metho. <laughs> Sorry, I'm holding this little mop top. Um, just to uh, change topic, this is the base of a leek, the root system of a leek. Did you know that you can actually plant this back into the ground and it'll grow back up again? It'll rejuvenate itself and grow up until it become a leek again. That's again the same thing with spring onions and your onions should be easily grown from the roots again. Like, as long as you've got the roots on the plant still. But anyway, that's the conifers, that's the leeks. I want to show you something else. We've just been doing some planting around here, cleaning up this garden bed and we've got the the cat mint growing everywhere because it spreads like wildfire and we cut some of our roses back and then you can see the irises are coming up. Now what I've planted here are actually fruit trees, apple trees. Now, I know some of you would know about these already. Uh, these don't grow into your normal sort of shape uh, fruit tree. They grow in a bollard shape which means like a, like a pillar straight up. They don't have any laterals and they don't grow any laterals or very few. And in fact, you're not meant to prune these at all or just a very light prune if they get too tall on you. So these are three varieties. We've got, I think it's called Bolero, Walsh, um, Polka, Flamingo and Dita. There's five varieties actually, not three, but I've got three of the five in this section here. Now I'm going to grow these straight up. Hopefully they don't have too much trouble growing next to this conifer. And these are great for those people who've got small gardens or small spaces or even just a pot specimen. I've grown these in the past in a garden bed that was only 600 wide. So this wide, fence on one side, a wall on the other, and it was a feature where you can see it from the road, and they grew straight up, and yes, they, they, they were very productive. Uh, very little pruning. If you get too many uprights, just cut some of them back, and they'll be delicious to look at and eat. So these are the uh, ballerina apples, or maypole, as I, I think they call them. And this is our weeping cherry. I've planted three on the property today until the rains came and destroyed our opportunities. We didn't finish planting um, and the olive trees around the dam as well. We've got into that. But what I want to show you here is a weeping cherry. Now, if you've got a weeping cherry, uh, I've had a few emails come through asking me about the, the upright growth that comes out of these plants. Sometimes you'll find that this being the rootstock, it's grafted on top here and you'll find that it may actually sucker off from here, which means it'll grow straight up. And sometimes you might find it off one of these branches where the buds burst and for whatever the reason it decides to grow up into the sky. Now you can train that one down if it's growing off one of these branches but the ones that grow off the side of this trunk are basically the rootstock and you need to cut them off completely. Yes it's been just planted. I haven't watered these in yet and we had a good drop of rain just now. Um, got them staked up with a bamboo and a bit of soft tie. A third or fourth stake would be good too. I'll just see how we go with that but I look at it from here I think I'm going to have to put another three four stakes here yeah to tie it up so it doesn't wobble. The other thing also is the pruning. Let me come around here for a second. Have a look at this. Now, when you buy them at your local garden centre or wherever you get them from, you'll find they've got nice long tendrils coming down, long branches weeping all the way down, which is delicious and great to look at. I like that expression, delicious. They're really nice to look at, but you don't want it to be so long. You want to create that open umbrella so that if you could sit underneath it, it'd be like an umbrella. And to create that, you need to prune it back. Now, this was broken in transit, so I've got to clean that little cut off there. And what I've got to do is basically hopefully get another bud to burst out from the top of that and it'll grow out. But when you do cut it back, and this is what I've done, because these were down to about here, another 30, 90 centimetres length on these. Now, if I didn't prune them off, they'd grow to the ground. It wouldn't thicken up. You'd get a lot of flowers on it, but it wouldn't be really a stunning feature. We cut it back, and we have to cut it back to a bud that's on top of the actual branch. Not to the inside, not to the side if you can, but on top, so it's above. So the new growth, when it comes out, it'll actually come out and weep and continue to weep. Now, if you're lucky enough, you'll probably get two that come out and weep through that. And that's what we've done here. We've got a couple of little buds here, one on either side, not perfectly on top. Hopefully they multiply and come out there and the same here. Have a look at that. That's another bud. Angle cut about five mil away from it in the same direction as which way the bud's going to grow is what you've got to do. So if you've got a weeping cherry out there in your garden, freshly planted, 
and I'll show you one that I haven't pruned yet. We've got to prune them just before they burst out so you can enjoy the beautiful growth. Yes, the flowers as well, but they'll come in time. First, we need to establish the structure. Let's go check out the one I haven't pruned. Jack, what are you eating? Hey, what are you eating this time? Hey, good boy? Huh? Was that nice? You like that? Yeah, good. Show me, is this what you're eating? This stuff here? Is that good? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good boy. Is there anything you don't eat? Yeah, Kara. You jealous little girl. Come on, let's go. Have a look at this. Hey, where you dig and you find grass, you wonder why your plants don't grow and the grass grows. Look at that, look at it, 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 look at that. I'm forever in a day pulling this stuff out of the garden beds. I'm so tired of it. And it goes again and again. Look, look, where, where does it stop? Where is this going to stop? Oh. Yeah, that's a, that's a losing battle for me, folks. This is my garden tool now today. I'm going to plant my leek here. Just leave the top sticking out like that. That'll be fine. That's all it needs. Finished. Yeah. This is one that I planted here just near the dam, which is actually not bad in shape. You can see it's already suckered off a few times over here. So we've got a nice weep coming on along here. Now, we want to thicken this up. And I can probably remove some of these, but I won't at this stage. What I'm going to do is just give them a light tip prune to an outward facing bud, like this one here, which is quite long. Now, I don't want that to grow any further. And if I don't take the tip off that, it'll just keep growing. So. I'm going to bring it back to about here, which is not a big prune, but it's just enough. 60, 70 centimetres in length. There's a bud just facing out there, so we're just going to cut it just below that on the angle. And we do the same along with all the rest of them. Find an outward facing bud, take the tip off. Now it's going to look a little bit like a little skirt that we're creating. And that's okay for the short term because being a deciduous tree, they grow super fast. Now we've got a couple of broken branches here. Up here, have a look at that, that's broken as well. I'm trying to feel along here, there's a bud just up here. I can't see it, but I can feel it. So I'm gonna try and not cut my fingers off. There, there's that one there. That one up there's broken as well. Now look, there's a bud underneath there. If I was to cut it here, look. See what I've just done there? I've cut it to an, a bud facing underneath. Now that is gonna grow out like this like that. It's going to grow out. It may grow out straight, but more than likely it will have a slight curve on it. Now, if it does curve, you can just tie it down if you want to work with that bud, that is. If you want to work with that, you can just tie it down with a bit of fishing wire and peg it down to the ground. And that's with any of these branches, because sometimes you'll find a branch sitting up like that. It's the perfect branch, but it's just growing in the wrong direction. Tie the end down with a bit of fishing wire or string and peg it down to the ground and give it time to grow and it eventually it will establish itself. Now that's not where I'm cutting it. I'm cutting it to a bud that's on top or slide on a uh, bad cut, a terrible cut. You make it work. We'll cut this one a little bit more. And that's it, folks. That's what you got to do with your cherry trees, weeping cherry trees. Clean these ones off, a little bit dead on the end, like that. And the rest is fine. A bit of compost, fertilizer, EcoBoost, and liquid gold to give them a good chance to grow big, strong, healthy roots. And that should give you plenty of flowers and lots of enjoyment to look at too. Now you can see across the dam there, we've got all our maples staked up and we started planting our olive trees earlier on, but look at the clouds above here, they're rain clouds. We had a bit of rain that came down pretty suddenly on us. Got us, we got caught out. So we'll go back out there afterwards and try and finish the planting. So we've got maple, olive, maple, olive, maple, olive. And those olive trees are to die for because we're going to be picking the olives to make oil, just like our Hellenic Gift Extra Virgin Olive Oil on our website. Check it out, a beautiful olive oil. And our double deal sales are still on until midnight tonight. So go to vasilisgarden.com, check it out. Until then, from me, Vasily, Maresi.